who actually wore the Indians uniform. He just kills them, and Marco Scudero did damage last night. Well, a career night last night. Tied his career high with four RBIs. The first time he's ever hit two home runs in a ball game, and the last one was a big three-run home run, and it really put the game out of reach. So Scudero this year against the Indians, just a 370 average. He's getting on base. He's walked eight times. He's scored 11 runs. He's done a terrific job this year for the Blue Jays in that leadoff spot. Yeah, he hasn't just hurt the Indians. He's had a terrific year for Toronto all in all. Now, for the Indians today, it's David Huff. Now, David Huff will try to go out and pitch the Indians to a win, but so far, the only guy that's been able to do that is Cliff Lee. Well, it is amazing. They legitimately have a chance once every five days, and that's when Cliff Lee is on the mound. You can look at his numbers, and, I mean, they are so good, and then you look at the other four stars the Indians have used, and they are so bad. 0-3, they're looking for their first win. They've walked eight. They've struck out 12. Lee has been perfect, so, you know, he's not pitching again until Sunday, so someone's going to have to step up. Well, David Huff has had good outings. He does have four wins. But for David Huff, he's got a tough lineup to contend with here today in Toronto. Well, he, he's a guy that has to stay aggressive, and he's been a five-inning guy. I mean, and it's tough to tell what you're going to get when you only go five innings. If he can keep that pitch count pitch count down and, and attack those hitters, uh, he should be okay. He's going up against Mark Zepchinski today, who's uh, making his four start one and one. He's, he's a control pitcher, so we'll see what the Indians are going to get from him. Hopefully the Indians can get Huff a little offensive support early and maybe get out of here with a win, taking two out of three from Toronto. We'll be back with the play-by-play -play action coming up next. This afternoon as the Indians and Jays put the Raps on a three-game series. Toronto comes into this game today with a record of 47 wins, 48 losses. They're ten and a half games off the pace in the American League's Eastern Division. The Indians made all 37 and 58 on the year. Just a half game in back of Kansas City who has lost nine straight for fourth place in the American League Central Division. So a chance to move into a fourth place tie with a win here today, not to mention get a series win. If his Drupal Cabrera and company can club their way to a victory here today. And for the most part, Rick, that's the way they've won when David Huff is on the hill. When they've won, it's because they've scored a lot of runs, not necessarily because he's outpitched his counterpart. That's, yeah, they've given him a lot of run support. You know, something that's what you want to do. Last night, Pavano couldn't. Go back to back. They were looking to win back-to-back uh, -back games for just the eighth time this year, and they could not do that because of the long ball. And Carl missed his spots, and they took advantage of it. His first four hits of the game were home runs, and you know and when you don't have Cliff Lee on the mound, and we showed you in the open, boy, it's been Cliff Lee or it's been Staff, and that's basically what it has been. And I mean, it's just been a bad combination. Pitching matchup today got a couple of youngsters. Mark Zepchinski going for Toronto today. 
He won't turn 24 until the end of August. And then of course David Huff for the Indians. He'll turn 25 at the end of August. So a couple of young southpaws squaring off here today at the Rogers Center. Each will be facing the opponent for the first time in their young careers. Mark Zepchinski and the Blue Jays take the field. And we'll take a look at the starting nine for Eric Wedge. It's brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Proud to be the official auto insurance provider of the Cleveland Indians. It's Grady Sizemore as Drupal Cabrera and Shinsu Chu. Victor Martinez batting cleanup. Johnny Peralta hits fifth. Red Hot Ryan Garko in the sixth hole. Then Ben Francisco, Jamie Carroll, and Chris Jimenez will start behind home plate today and bat night. Well, Mark Zipchinski is... Six foot three, 205 pounds, another left-hander. He is the fifth pitcher to make his major league debut for a starter uh, for the Blue Jays this year. The other one, Romero, we saw him last night. Ray Cecil, we saw him in the first game, and also Mills. It's the first time they've done that since 1977 in its very first year. He is one and one, a 250 ERA. He's not overpowering. He sinks the baseball. He tries to keep it in play and get you out with three pitches or less. We'll set the defense behind Zepchinski. It looks like this. Lind, Wells, and Rios in the outfield. Bautista, McDonald getting a start at short tonight. Hill is at second. Millar is at first. Barajas behind the plate. Umpires today, Mike Everett calling balls and strikes. Brian Gorman at first. The crew chief, Jerry Davis, is at second. And C.B. Buckner down at third. You know, Zepchinski, he, he started the year in double A, began it in New Hampshire. In the Eastern League, he went seven and five and pitched very well with a 293 ERA in his 14 starts. Got called up to triple A, went two and oh with an ERA of 0.79. And then uh, up to the big leagues already, so he has made the jump from double A this year. This is only his third season of professional baseball for David Huff, starting against him just his fourth. Grady Sizemore ready to step in and get us underway today. Grady looking to break out of a mini funk. 0 for 8 in the series. Overall, 0 for his last 14. Just when it looked like he was really starting to heat up, he's been cooled off here north of the border. First pitch of the game up and in for ball one. That's in there for a strike, evens the count. 68 degrees here in Toronto, Canada, but it has been raining since late last night. So the roof will be closed here this afternoon. Well, we're thankful they have a roof today. You're not kidding. Comes back with another strike, and now he's ahead of the count one and two. Zepchinski, nothing overpowering. But good command and the one two missed inside that in the scouting report we got from one time Indian and former Blue Jay Pat Tabler is his poise his composure on the mound is very good especially for a young pitcher chops it foul it's the third straight lefty that the Indians have faced on this trip and guess what really good chance they're going to face three more in Seattle. They are going to get the first two, and then uh, for Sunday they have to be determined. Although it is uh, Olson's day to pitch, who is another left-hander. Now whether they go with him or not, I don't know. But they have a chance of facing six lefties on this trip to start. Ground ball right to Aaron Hill. The second baseman throws out Sizemore one day. Sure, Bart Swain, media relations director, will be. In his book, wondering when the last time the Indians would have faced six consecutive left handers. It's hard to do. One well, down for his dribble, Cabrera. The Indian shortstop has had a penchant for extra base hits in the first inning. He tripled in the first inning of game one. He doubled last night in the first inning. Well, why not Homer in this uh, last final game? Chinsky fires it in there for a strike. It's 
Zepchinski, who hails from Yorba Linda, California, but when you watch him go into the lineup and you look at that last name, it stretches all the way across <laughs> yeah. his back. We could call him the eye chart. <laughs> I mean, he has as many letters on that shirt. He's not missing many. As you're going to have. I think the only other guy with more letters is Salta Lamachia that is down in Texas. But this guy, you've got some, look, you've got some strange letters in, the, in that. And Pat Talbert told us when his family first came to the country. Fly ball to right. Rios gathers it into them. They had 10 more letters in that last name. Now, I don't know how that would work or how you would even pronounce it. But how do you, where do you start with that? Let's see. Let's eliminate uh, a couple of Z's, <laughs> a few C's, and, a, and an N. I mean, where do you, there's I, Tabby. There's Pat Talbert. He's got the day off from uh, televising here in Toronto. He was part of the Blue Jays. First world championship team, the one that won back to back world titles here. And he's, he's with us every year out in, uh, well, Goodyear, Arizona now for the F Indians fantasy camp. I thought it was an interesting story he told us too, Rick. After they won the world championship, they were getting ready to go out and celebrate with their victory parade. The parade, right. And the general manager, Pat Gillick, called he and he named off about six other Winfield, Steve, Jimmy Key. Key. The guys who Marantz Molinex, guys who've been here a long time, called him in one by one and said, "We're not bringing you back next year. Thanks for your time. Congratulations on the World Championship. We bid you adieu." <laughs> Tabby said it was like, "Okay, now go out and have fun. Yeah, go enjoy the parade." <laughs> but what did Pat Gillick do? He went out and reloaded, and they won it again the next year. And that's uh, life in professional sports. Sometimes two balls, two strikes, two down here in the first inning. Shinsu Chu, two for five in the series. And a swing of this. One, two, three, go the Indians. And Zepchinski throws up his first zero of the day. For Cito Gaston's Blue Jays. Marco Scudero leads it off, but he's DHing today. Then Aaron Hill and Adam Lynn. Kevin Millar gets his first action in the series batting cleanup. Then Wells and Rios. Bautista and Barajas and Johnny Mack batting ninth gets the start at shortstop today. Scudero coming off a career night. His first ever two homer game. Tried his career best with four runs batted in. But this time, Grady Sizemore takes a hit away from him. With a nice sliding catch in center field. Nothing like getting tested right out of the chute. Well, you, you get, get ready to come out, and he had a good jump on that ball coming in. Makes the catch and then slides to stop for out number one. 
Brings up Aaron Hill. He's three for eight in the series with a double and a homer. All the way up to the right. 117 hits for Aaron Hill this year. Firestone, a tradition of innovation. Reveals that he is second only to Ichiro, who well, we will see next on this road trip. Everybody's second to Ichiro all the time, but he's right there with the rest of the, the normal the people. The mortals? Yeah, the mortals is right. Ground ball to second baseman Jamie Carroll. Two down. Let's take a look at the Indians' defense brought to you by the Team Shop, where you can get two baseballs for $14. It's Francisco Sizemore and Chu in the outfield. Peralta, Cabrera, Carroll, and Garco in the infield. And getting the start behind the plate today, Chris Jonas. David Huff making his 13th start. He is 4-4, four and four, coming off a loss to the Seattle Mariners. And Hernandez, and Felix Hernandez won it again last night in Detroit, a 2-1 to one ball game. And that guy remains hot. He went five innings, gave up seven hits and three runs. And I think the key for David is get past five innings. The three times that he has done that this year, he has wins. He's gone seven and a third against the Cardinals. He got a win. He went eight innings against Pittsburgh. He got a win. And six innings against Oakland and got a win. The only other time he got a win was his very his first major league win was a five inning start against the White Sox when they scored eight runs. So the question becomes how does he do that? Like he's doing right now in his last start he was ahead of the hitters but then let him back into the count you know and he, he wasted a lot of pitches stay aggressive another Carl way. Willis was telling us that you know he what he wants him to put him away as early as he can don't sit up there and let him back into the count on you. The 2 2 pitch. Missed outside, full count. Chris Jimenez making his first major league start behind the plate today. Pretty versatile player, though, when you've got a catcher who can play the outfield and play it well. Had a nice play last night. Checked his swing. Did he go? No, he did not, says CB Buckner. And a two out walk. Well, it was a close pitch. You see where he's sitting. And maybe just a hair outside. Carl Willis was telling me yesterday that, that that's the one thing that it takes time for young pitchers to learn. And that is big league hitters, for the most part, are going to make you throw it on the plate. They're not going to chase that pitch that's a couple of inches outside. They may do that in the minor leagues. But it takes the young pitchers a while to learn. You've got to throw it on the dish. These guys to swing and miss.
Continental Airlines, work hard, fly right. Buy McCafe coffees at McDonald's. All made to order with fresh ground espresso beans. And by All Care Dental Indentures, we make seeing the dentist easy. Back here in Toronto. No score second inning. Victor Martinez will lead it off. Then Johnny Peralta and Ryan Garko. Mark Zepchinski lets it fly. Catches the outside corner. Victor, two hits in the first game of the series, two hits last night. Three multi hit efforts in his last four games. One ball, one strike. game against these two teams this year. They met seven times last year. The Indians were six and one against the Jays. Well, they didn't win a ball game here. Now the one two pitch. Just fought it off to stay alive. Now this year Martinez his batting average is much higher when he's facing a right handed pitcher 301 versus 267 and last year it was just the opposite last year from the right side he batted 339 and 260 from the other side. So from one year to the next you never know. Strike three call. Back to back punch outs for Zipchinski. One down here in the second, and Victor Martinez not real thrilled with Mike Everett's. Well, he's not sure he, he felt he swung, but he called it. He didn't get any help. He started, uh, his body got out there. Let's look at the side angle. I he, assume he called the pitch, not the swing. I'm thinking he, he said he swung it when I looked at him. Either way, I don't think it was a real good call. <laughs> That's exactly. Johnny Peralta, he takes the strike. Johnny just one out of eight in the series. Ran that one inside. That's just a bit inside on the count. Two and one. It went right back in there. Came close, but still missed. Well, when you're not a, a hard thrower, you have to double up on pitches to make your number one pitch effective if it's going to be that little breaking ball away or the change up to the right handers. You have to make sure you use the inside part of the plate and, you know, double up. Or Why more is that? A hitter, if a hitter sees you come in there two times in a row, you, you just automatically start thinking well, inside? Well, they just don't start leaning. Yeah, and, and you put a, you, you put the some doubt into his mind and, and that's what you have to do as a pitcher. You've got to put some doubt into the hitter's mind that you may come inside even though most of the time you're going to stay away. He's just not sure when you do it and he knows that you'll go back to back times. When a hitter can eliminate doubt he is a much better hitter when he can sit in account look for his pitch and he knows what he's going to get then he doesn't have to worry about it. And the payoff pitch. Missed outside. He tried a backdoor breaking ball, but it's his first walk of the day. Fans, don't forget, if you're thinking about getting engaged, check out Alvin's Jewelers Pray for Rain promotion. Buy your engagement ring at Alvin's Jewelers. If it rains on your wedding day, the engagement ring is free. Log on to alvinsjewelers.com or stop by today for all the details in their Pray for Rain promotion. Ryan Garko steps in four for four in the series with a double. He's reached in his last six plate appearances. And looks at a first pitch strike. 
with Zepchinski he has at times been prone to lose it you know for short periods where the command just eludes him they walk a couple of hitters but that uh, the poise and composure we talked about he's able to focus himself again and bring it back together and that's that's something that you, know, you don't see in a lot of young pitchers once they lose it it takes them a while to figure out what went wrong seems like things start snowballing yeah. you see him go sometimes they can get to two outs and have a tough time getting that third and final out of the inning Bob back out of play one ball two strikes. Well, he had a good pitch to hit. He followed it straight back. It seemed like uh, yesterday Ryan was able to go down and get the pitch that was even below the yeah. kneecaps. He hit a couple of low pitches very well. Ground ball in the hole. McDonald fields it. Goes to second for long. Relay in time. A spectacular double play. John McDonald still has incredible hands and a strong throwing arm. 6 4 3 and inning ending twin killer. Vernon Wells, Alex Rios, and Jose Batista. Missed outside to David Huff for ball one. Vernon Wells, one for eight in the series with a home run. Cuts and misses. And it evens the count. Chopper to third. Johnny Peralta fires it over. One down. Let's check out the Altel Text Bowl question of the game. First MVP for the Blue Jays in the World Series of 1992. Was it Joe Carter, Robbie Alomar, Dave Winfield, or Pat Borders? Text your answer to 31962. Results later in the game. Every one of those guys played with the Indians as well. Alex Rios takes the strike. I was just thinking, Rick, only Joe Carter played for the Indians first before right. going to Toronto. They all, the rest of them came after. 
Jay Carter, part of the level of excellence here in Toronto. And those numbers up there, I thought they were retired numbers, but they're not. They're just honored. There's a hard drive, deep left field into the corner. And Francisco trying to dig it out, but not before Alex Rios has a one-out double. Something that the Jays do very well is double. They lead all of baseball in doubles. That is now 213 for Rios. That is his 23rd double. Pulls it down the left field line off the wall, and he can cruise in easily. So the first hit of the ball game is an extra base hit. Down low. One ball, no strikes. Two doubles and five homers in last night's ball game. David Huff eyes that runner at second base. That's a good idea because Rios can take off if you don't pay attention. He has 15 steals. He's got those long strides. Covers a lot of ground with only well, a few steps. And it's easier to steal third base with a left hand around the mound. That's why Jamie Carroll is hanging around the second base bag. His job to pinch that infield or that base runner closer to second base and don't let him get a walking lead and that momentum going toward third. Stolen base. Well, when you take it into consideration, the first game that Chris Jimenez has been back there behind the plate, so not easy for him. He doesn't have a rhythm going out there, throwing from behind the plate. So it doesn't surprise me that they try and, and go. He had plenty of time. They did a good job of holding him. He just threw it because of the bad throw, and it's because Jimenez hasn't been behind the plate. Infield in with a one out payoff pitch off the end of the bat. Garko is going to be able to look Rios back. Go to the bag for out number two. So Bautista unable to bring him home. Well, have you planned your company picnic yet? The Indians offer a one of a kind venue at Progressive Field. You can choose from a variety of affordable food and beverage options. Pre-game picnics can accommodate of groups of all sizes. Call 216 420 hits. Runner at third, two down. Rod Barajas, the catcher, steps in and takes a first pitch strike. Barajas, 0 for 3 in the series to this point. And David Huff, one out away from working around a one out double. Back over the screen, 0 and 2. And here comes. The situation that we talked about earlier with David Huffman for any young pitcher, you've got the hitter down on the count. Now, you want to be aggressive, but you don't want to make that 0 2 pitch right. so good that it's hittable. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a fine line, I suppose. They want to go inside. Got him to swing at it, but he fouls it out of play. You know, because the worst thing you can do as a pitcher is you got the guy buried in the count and you give him something fat and sassy and he drives the ball into the gap and well, he just gets an 0 2 base hit, yeah. you know, which is a cardinal sin. Pitch. You learn how to make quality pitches. And you know, the, the first one I like, and it doesn't have to always be that way, but you know, show a guy you will go inside. It's the second time they're going back in there after an 0-2 count. And that potentially can open up that change up to the outside yeah. part of I the I mean, play it floor. used to be, uh, and this is you know years ago, 
You get down 0-2 and you know you're going to get something hard up and in, you know, to back you off the plate. It just seemed like that was it every time. Looks like Jimenez wants him to go back in there. Round into third. Johnny Peralta fields. Fires. Got him. Nice work by David Huff. And the one-out double does no damage. Through two, no score in Toronto. Francisco, Jamie Carroll, and Chris Jimenez. Mark Zepchinski through the first two has struck out two and he's walked one. Francisco, two for seven in the series with a double. And takes the ball down low. Three strike to the outside corner. Francisco lifts a fly ball, right center field. Rios has it. Oh, no. Here's our great clip of the game from last night. They sit off uh, Brandon Lee. Drove in that run. I believe that's the one who made it 10 to 6. Last run the Indians scored last night. Relax, you're at great clips. Here's Jamie Carroll, one for three. In the series, played in the opener, sat out last night's game. Darrell fires or takes a strike, 0 and 1. Chinsky wants a new baseball. Always fun to look back on this day in baseball history. And I don't know if this was appropriate today. After watching the highlights of last night's action. On this day in 1925, Rick, Lou Gehrig hits his first Grand Slam of his career. First of a record 23 Grand Slams. But Manny Ramirez is closing in on. Yeah, he had, I think, number 20 or 21 last night. I'm not sure. And a pinch hit slam, and it was the first pitch. First, yeah. That's unbelievable. Yes, it was. He's it's not even playing. He comes in, first pitch. Set up in Hollywood. Yeah, out in L.A. in Mannywood. Vin Scully said that was more Hollywood than Hollywood. <laughs> but, but also very typical of Manny Ramirez. 
Missed in off the plate. Three balls and a strike. Lou Gehrig hit 23 grand slams in his 17 year career for the Yankees. And it's ball four. Second walk issued by Zachinsky. Both have come with one out here in the ballgame. When the Indians hit home runs, we raise money for a very worthy cause, the gathering place. Wonderful, caring community that offers programs free of charge to individuals and their families who are battling cancer. Great clips donating $50 for every Indians homer this year. Rick, uh, Rick and I are each donating $5 per dinger. You can make a donation as well. Log on to touchedbycancer.org. Chris Jimenez has two home runs on the air. They came early in his time in the big leagues with the tribe. I remember his first one in Minnesota. And in Chicago. I think yeah, right after I that. think it was a few days later. A strike called and the count quickly 0 and 2. Two strike. Nope. No fired over to first instead to make sure Carroll doesn't take off. Swung on and miss. Third strikeout for Zepchinski. Two down here in the third inning. I've been throwing a lot of these little sliders out over the plate. Takes something off. You can see about 79 miles per hour. That pitch out of the strike zone. So that first time through, now they get an idea of what this guy throws. But. Zepchinski set a Blue Jays record with seven strikeouts in his major league debut this year. You know, the previous record was six. It had been done three times, but most recently, Brett Cecil did it back in May against the Indians, where he struck out six. But he becomes the first American League pitcher to strike out seven or more and allow two or fewer hits in his major league debut since David Clyde did it with the Texas Rangers. Against the Minnesota Twins back in 1973. This down low and two different pitchers. David Clyde was a you know a oh. power pitcher, fastball, big curveball, hard curveball. This guy is a finesse, control. One one pitch missed away with it. Jamie Carroll the runner at first base with two down here in the third no score. Strike over the inside corner. Well, you can see why the Jays certainly think highly of Zachinsky because he's not a one trick pony. He's got a number of different pitches, whether it be the breaking ball, the slider. Carroll takes off. They throw to first. Millar's throw to second is tardy, and Jamie Carroll steals the bag. Well, you can do that with as slow as he comes to first base. And Millar at first, not a very good first baseman. So Carroll able to steal the base after getting picked off. And when there's something like that happens, there's two strikes, so you protect Grady in this situation. Just keep right on going. See, it's a really slow leg kick and the look to home play, but Jamie was able to get over there. Millar comes up, throws a little bit high, but not bad. 
Not a bad play thought he had him but they get the stolen base. So now. We'll see if the Indians can take advantage of the steal by Carroll with two down. And a 2 2 count on Grady Sizemore. Back to the screen it goes at a good rip. Boy, you see, there's the difference. There's a mistake right there. And it's fouled off. You don't put it in play. When you're going good and you get a pitch like that, you hit it hard. You hit it hard somewhere on the field. Bounces it to first. Millar will take it himself. Slump for Sizemore continues. And we'll go to the bottom of the third. No score. Scores. We go to the bottom of inning number four. Excuse me, bottom of inning number three here in Toronto. John McDonald will lead it off. And then we'll go to the top of the order. Johnny Mack, despite limited playing time, is batted 294 this year. And was it about a week or two ago, hit his first home run back in Yankee Stadium, didn't he? He sure did. Didn't you get a text from him? Where where were we? On a plane or something? Oh, I texted him first. Oh, you did? Yeah. I said, all you do is hit home runs, huh? <laughs> well, you do it in the right spot. Do it in New York. That's right. He rounds round this one to third. Backhanded by Johnny Peralta. And he throws him out one down. Let's get a look at our all care dental indentures. Smiling easy cam here today. Lots of kids here. It's a camp day. All the summer camps. Yeah, well, it's a good day to come inside. Oh, you're not kidding. Nothing you can do out so outdoors in Toronto today with the rain pouring down. 17 locations across northeastern Ohio. All care dental indentures make seeing the dentist easy. Marco Scudero lined out the center field his first time up. Two balls, no strikes. Well, I've got a good one for you, pal. 2 0 pitch fouled away. We're going to say we're going to tease our audience, make them, make them stay. We're going to unveil this next one here. What, on this date in baseball history? No, but we were talking about the left handed starters. Yeah. 
facing him. Right. How many Potentially times? Potentially six yes. in a row. Six in a row. Correct. Has it ever happened before? Well, we've got the answer. Well, I'm sure it has. Coming up in the next half inning. Ball sure up the middle. Happened. Backhanded by Jamie Carroll. The second baseman throws out Scudero. Two down. Well, come on out and help celebrate Tom Hamilton's 20 years in the booth. That'll be Friday the 31st when the Tigers are in town. There'll be a fireworks show after the game. Should be a good night. Hammy's been there 20 years already, believe it or not. How long have you been here? About 20. He and I started the same year. There he is. Flipping that pen like nobody else. <laughs> He's got his little light going. He's beautiful. He's, he's reading like a, a book right now. He's like a professor. Talking. Yes, he does. <laughs> professor Hamilton. Come on out. We're celebrating 20 years of professor's life. <laughs> right at home plate, Chris Jimenez. Watch out for the bat. Backpedaling makes the grab. And the Blue Jays go one, two, three. Three complete from the Rogers Center. No score. And it'll be as Dribble Cabrera, Shinsu Chu, and Victor Martinez for the Indians. Line drive up the middle for Cabrera, and the Indians have their first hit today. And they get their leadoff man aboard for the first time as well. The second hit in the ball game. Right back up the middle. Take it back from where that's a pretty good. Uh, Idea taken right back up the middle on this guy. You'll stay on his off speed pitches. He's been throwing a lot of sliders. Turns it over. Now, oh, this is the guy you got to get going, too. He struck out his first time up. And that's strike one. All right, the last time the Indians faced six consecutive left handed starters, you just missed it by one year. 1974, the Indians faced Dave Hamilton, Ken Holtzman, Vida Blue with Oakland, Dave McNally, Baltimore, Ross Grimsley, Baltimore, Mike Cuellar, Baltimore. Okay. Oakland and Baltimore. Back then, those were two pretty darn good teams. That was on, uh, starting on July 19th through July 26th, 1974. That's courtesy of our friends at Stats Inc. Thanks to Redbird who tracked this down. Now, this is. Five in a row today that they face left handed starters. It is? This is number five in a row because if you go back to the Seattle, Seattle series, you had Washburn, 
Uh, then we Olsen. had oh, yeah, Garrett Olson. Yeah, but it wasn't uh, Felix Hernandez in the middle of that. Now he started that series. Well, he was. No, it wasn't Olson. We're, we're missing one here. I must forget to grab my cards. Well, that was a four-game series. Exactly. That's right. We had uh, Washburn and then Bedard. Ouch. She was drilled. So Indians at first and second. So you had. So this is five. We're going to get to eight. <laughs> Bedard. And now this whole series. So that's three, four. This is five. Tomorrow is Ryan Roland Smith, which is six. Eric Bedard would be seven on Saturday. And then again, two to be determined still for Sunday. Now, the last time they faced seven in a row, you have to go back to 1952 when they faced eight straight. So they could equal that mark. I'll be done. If it's another yes. left-hander on Sunday, and that's the that's the record for the Indians back to 1919, which as far as that's as far as the info they track goes. <laughs> that's right. How about these names? This is some good ones too. Back in 1952, as Victor Martinez steps in with two on and nobody out, and he's trying to get on the board here in the fourth against Zepchinski. Hal Newhauser, okay. Bill White. Billy Pierce of the White Sox, Bob Kane, Gene Bearden, Tommy Byrne, Bobby Shantz, and Alex Kellner. Wow, there's some names right there from the past. Zepchinski deals and just missed outside. And Gene Bearden hadn't he just pitched for the Indians? He pitched for what 47 was it? I think he was there at 48. 48. 48. Yeah. This streak of facing left-handed hitters belongs to the Baltimore Orioles. They faced nine straight at one time since 1919, somewhere along the way. 44 teams have had streaks of, game, of at least seven straight games against left-handers. Well, that's the, I guess the luck of the draw. Pitch down low to Martinez. Three and one to count. Still rare any way you look at it. Right now, the Indians got something going this time through the lineup. Second time through. Two guys on, nobody out, and a good hitter's count to Martinez. And that's going to be ball four. Martinez will load the bases. Cabrera to third, chew down to second. Victor trots to first. So the Indians have a golden opportunity here in the fourth inning. Bases loaded, nobody out, and Johnny Peralta, who walked his first time up, will be the batter. Well, how about this? Getting information now that depending on who starts Sunday for Seattle, guess who's starting Monday? For the Angels. Saunders. That's a left hand. <laughs> These guys. <laughs> this thing could keep going. It's getting out of control. It's, <laughs> it's, that's a little bit out there, but tentatively, that's that's the word we're getting. Olsen's going to start. Street could stay. Peralta swing and a miss. That could make it nine. That could equal the, the all time record. I don't know if they have uh, if the Angels have another left hander. <laughs> Who cares? Don't get us going. It's taking on a life of its own. Call up Chuck Finley, bring him back for one game. <laughs> well, Mark Langston. Donnie fouls it off. And he's in the hole 0 2. Hit a hit batter and a walk. Loaded the bases for the Indians. Cabrera, Chu, Martinez aboard. Hoping for Peralta to deliver here. 
Johnny, a 333 hitter on the year in bases loaded situations. The 0 2, foul to win. For what it's worth, this year, Johnny. One for five with the bases loaded and less than two out. He's three for seven when the bases are loaded and there are two men down. Almost chased after, but he held up. All in two strikes. Well, he wanted them, and the home plate umpire called out Victor on a, on a play that wasn't even that close. I'm still thinking he called the pitch a strike though on that. Well, we'll go back and I'll uh, we'll have him take a look at it. But I think he called on the swing because I saw him like raise that yeah. right hand. We'll take a look at it. If it was on the pitch, like you said, it was a bad call. Anyway. <laughs> Johnny fucks it off, stays alive. 60 pitches now for Zepchinski. Ryan Garko waits on deck. Blue Jays outfield shading Peralta toward right center. Really bunching him in the gap that way. Up high two and two. Everything's inside too. They're not giving Peralta any breathing room. They're throwing those sliders down and in. Taking something off. Fastballs backing him off. They don't want him to extend his arms. Barajas going through the signs. Now they're ready. The 2 2. Again, he fights it off. All right, Murphy went back and looked at the tape. He's saying he did call it on the swing on that Victor Martinez strikeout back in the second inning. Now, on that check, so it was there, definitely bad. Yeah, uh, because on that one, Peralta went farther than Victory thought of. Martinez, the runner. At first base, Chu in front of him at second, Cabrera at third. That's outside, and the count goes full. First time he's really thrown one anywhere other than in on his fists. And now the string is out. A little moment of truth right here from Mark Zipchinski. Bases loaded, nobody out. Fourth inning. And the payoff pitch. And it's foul again. It's been a nine pitch at bat for Johnny Peralta. Who again walked his first time up. Sensing a key moment here early in the game. Most noise they've made so far. 3 2 pitch. Swallow on and miss. Fourth strikeout for Peralta or for uh, Zepchinski. One down here in the end. Well, he pulls the string. That's a slider coming in again. Didn't give in, and uh, that's about 80 miles per hour. Really took something off. He swings through it. It's out number one. And so Ryan Garko will try to deliver. He hit into a double play his first time up. But it was a spectacularly turned double play where John McDonald went into the hole. And made a nice backhanded stop. Fired hard to second and Hill turned it on to first. This year, Ryan Garko, three for seven in bases loaded situations. He's a perfect three for three with less than two out. Well, they've got to take advantage of it here. A high drive fouled on the left side. 
They have got to take advantage of it. They've had opportunities. Go back and look at that double play turn in the second inning. It's worth another look. And you see, he's so quick. His feet are so quick. He's down there sliding to brace himself to pop up and throw. And yeah, I mean, they turn that double play. Of course, you had Garko running. It makes it, it gives you a little extra time. But still, that was a beautifully turned double play. Not many could turn it. No. Oh, one pitch. Way outside. Snap throw out of first. Martinez just did get back in time. Malar came in behind him. And Victor with a good dive just did beat it. That's a pretty pretty heads up play right there. You end up, you know, falling asleep out there. And I'll tell you what, they sneak up behind you. The perfect time to try it because the right handed hitter's up. No one's blocking your view to throw to first base. Well, that's a scary play when you're going head first. With somebody's knee right in your face. Yeah. Outside two and one. A lot of pitches for Mark Zepchinski. He's up to 68. Mm. Evens the count of two and two. It's been like uh, these guys, uh, the Toronto pitchers in this series, have bent, but they've never broken. Yeah. You know what I mean? That with the Indians have had a ton of base runners, but they need an out. They get the out. The Indians have yet, I mean, to really have a big inning. Almost chased after it, but he held. Oh, the ring him up! You gotta be kidding me! Brian Gorman punches him out, and I didn't think he went around. That's well, two, I knew they were going to do it. When you look how quick his hands tried to come back, I, I had a feeling they were going to ring him up there. I, I didn't see it, but I watched his hands. He didn't go. He he didn't go. They got it back, but they ring him up. So that's out number two, and he's got a chance to get out of it. Ben Francisco has fly to right today. Chinsky fires it in there to leave the count of one and one. And the one one just missed with that pitch. So the count tips in favor of Francisco. Every guy has, has been, I'm talking about Peralta and Garco with this situation, they've had hitters counts, two and one. Three balls in a strike because he missed outside with it. So Francisco waiting for him to come into him. And it's outside ball four. The Indians get their first run of the game on a bases loaded two out walk. Nothing pretty about this inning. A single, a hit batter, a walk, back to back strikeouts, and another walk. And it brings pitching coach Brad Arnsberg out to the mound. And the batter is going to be Jamie Carroll. Well, let's uh, go down on the farm while we have a moment. Check out our subway. Fresh face of the game. Matt McBride at double A accurate. This guy's having, look at that, 73 ribbies down there. 32 doubles. Yeah, he's having a terrific season. Subway, play hard, eat fresh. And Akron Arrows team has been rolling all season long. 
So Zepchinski will face Jamie Carroll, who drew a walk his first time up. Bases loaded, two down, one nothing. Indians on top. These Toronto fielders, yeah, falling asleep. He's throwing pitches. Nothing's put in play. They've got the leadoff single. Another that he hit a guy. He walked a guy. He struck out two. He walked another one. They haven't put anything in play other than the throw down to first base on the pickoff attempt. That's been the only defensive action. A lot of standing around. Oh one. Missed away. Now well, his ratio is, is terrible out of the 77 33 balls 44 strikes. Again, two balls in the strike. Yeah, I've seen that a lot this year in baseball. The bases loaded walk. A lot, about a it the other lot of pitchers have walked with the bases loaded. Maybe more and more are adopting the Jim Palmer philosophy. Rather walk one in than give one up. Give four up. Yeah. Rather give up bases loaded walk than lay one in there and let the guy tattoo. I don't know. The other explanation is bad command. Afraid of contact. Two and two to count. Two down. Chew at third. Martinez at second. Francisco at first. He strikes out the side. Indians get a run and lead it one to nothing. Middle of the fourth. Where the Indians have a one nothing lead. They had the bases loaded and nobody out. And managed just a two out bases loaded walk to score the only run of this game. Adam Lynn, Kevin Millar, Vernon Wells for Toronto. Center. 
Sizemore cuts it off. No, it gets past him all the way to the fence and into second base with a double is Adam Wynn. Brady got over there, tried to swat at it with the backhand. Couldn't come up with it. One of those plays that, you know, it's just a little bit quicker in turf, and you try and get it on that second hop, but you're on the dead run. And it's awfully difficult to do. A fastball, it's a, not a good pitch by Huff. He leaves it up, and Lynn jumps all over it. So two hits for Toronto, both doubles. For Lynn, his 31st double. So he is right behind Brian Roberts of Baltimore. Swung on and missed. Kevin Millar grounded the third his first time up. Down low with it, two balls and a strike. The cap goes to three and one. Huff deals and that's hit a long way deep left field Francisco on the run can't get there that's going to bring home the tying run Lynn scores into second with the RBI double is Kevin Millar back to back two baggers to open the home half of the fourth for Toronto well, it didn't take him long to come right back and score two hitters back to back doubles and it's a tie ball game. Well, you can see why this ball club and in this ballpark why they hit so many doubles. They've got gap to gap hitters. They, they can pull the ball. They use the whole field. Last night it was the home run ball for them. Tonight's it's the doubles or today I should say. Bounces it foul does Vernon Wells. Grounded out to third bases last time up. Tied at one here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Popped him up. JB Carroll calling for it. Shallow right field. And that's out number one. Let's go back to the STO studios right now for a Ford Sports update with Al Pulowski. Thanks, Al. Runner at second, one out, Alex Rios. He doubled his first time up. Three hits in the game for Toronto. All three of them have been doubles. Birthday wishes today to Hayden Reese Lawrence, who is turning three from Westlake. So happy birthday, young man. Hope you're watching the ball game this afternoon. At three, very possibly could be. This is taking a nap. <laughs> At the belt for a call strike, it's one and two. 
Alex Rios three for eight in the series. Buffs one two pitch. Foul away again. So now we still have another week before baseball's official training deadline. But the Pittsburgh Pirates, Neil Huntington, continues to be active as far as making trades. Down and in, LaRoach going to Boston, right? Adam LaRoach was dealt, and I was trying to remember, this is five starting position players that he has traded since last July. And he's not done. This is fouled away. The reports out of Pittsburgh are that they're still looking to possibly move Freddie Sanchez and Jack Wilson, a longtime shortstop and second baseman. Fire sale. Yeah, they were trying to sign both of them to extensions. Swung out and missed. And strikes out Rios, two down. First strikeout for David Huff, and that's going to change the eye level. Got him to swing at a pitch out of the zone. So, a pretty good sequence there to get him to strike out. Jose Batista grounded out to first base his first time up. The interesting thing about that trade of LaRoche from the Pirates to Boston is this. Red Sox are two games out of first. And, you know, they're looking for a bat to help them. Mike Lowell's been struggling. They maybe move Kevin Euclid back to third. third. Right. 0 oh, 1 pitch. Check the swing foul, tipped it. Here's what general manager Neil Huntington had to say about Adam LaRoche. He didn't show a lot of energy, didn't show a lot of passion and fire. Well, you're in Pittsburgh. It's your last place. You've been playing there for a while. Let's see if it changes when he goes to Boston. <laughs> you're saying he's going to hit the passion and fire switch now? Uh, well, you might. Boston's just hoping it works out as well as it did when they traded for Jason Bay. Bounce to the third, just foul. You never know what can happen. I'm not saying there's a switch you turn on and off, but you know when you're out there, Pittsburgh is a tough place to play. Beautiful ballpark, but man, they've been. Well, it's been a revolving the, door for I know a decade it. and plus now. And I think a lot of those players, like Jack Wilson and Freddie Sanchez, are frustrated because they see everybody disappearing around them. Runner at second base with two down. Missed outside. One and two to count. Kevin Millar, the runner at second. Doubled in the tying run, and Bautista sends a sky high pop. Jamie Carroll at second base, under it, and the inning is over. Through four innings at the Rogers Center, we are knotted up in one apiece.
who you call for free with my circle any number any network one one our score fifth inning here in Toronto Chris Jimenez will lead off for the tribe and Grady Sizemore and his dribble Cabrera Mark Zepchinski 81 pitches so far today that last inning was no, a tough one to watch. Intolerable, yeah. Tough one to watch because he's all over the place. It's either you know way off the plate for a ball, and there have only not a whole lot of contact. Yeah. Let's put it that way. There've only been six balls put in play today. Yeah. There's another one and a base hit. The Indians get their leadoff man aboard for the second inning in a row as Chris Jimenez lines a single to center. And now Grady Sizemore. There you go. Got a nice pitch right back up the middle again. Both hits from the Indians have gone right back up the middle. Jimenez with a big smile as Kevin Millar. Not many guys talk more than Millar. He has a good time. Sizemore loops one toward left. Coming on is Lynn. One down. Well, if you're traveling and can't watch the tribe from your comfort to your own home, catch the game on your computer with MLB.tv. It's the ultimate baseball experience featuring 100 live out of market games per week, plus games you may miss on demand. For more details, visit Indians.com, where baseball is always on. And now, as Drew Cabrera will step in, one for two, Singleman scores last time up. Blue Jay bullpen is now busy. Outside. Right hander Sean Camp. Loosening. Oh, the first, but Jimenez is not going anywhere. Forget coming after, uh, coming up after the ball game today. Not only do we have the Conrad's post game show as always, but afternoon edition of All Bets Are Off with Bruce Drennan. And a replay comes your way tonight at seven. And at ten thirty, another installment of Beer Money. This time they're coming from the Great Lakes Brewing Company. Two one pitch. Rare grounds it to third. It gets right through Batista. Down the line it goes. On his way to third is Jimenez. He'll be held there. Into second base goes Cabrera. Gotta believe it'll be an error all the oh, way. Absolutely. It went right through Jose Batista. Well, he was down there thinking double play, and it looked like he backhanded it and went right under his legs. They were between his legs. That's the second error in the series for Toronto, and they're the best fielding team here. This is a, a ball he's just ball slips and goes right between his legs. And it and is an error all the and way. That's going to allow runners to get to second and third. The last uh, their last error cost them. It was game one. Yeah. And you know, on the bunt play by Grady, it was over Bay that tried to make the play to second base, threw it away. Second and third, they ended up scoring two in that inning and winning the game. Their Gold Glove third baseman Scott Rowland getting the day off. Now Batista would like to dig a hole under that turf and hide. There's Scott Rowland. One-zero -oh pitch. 
slow chopper up the line. It's going to trickle foul. Get you another chance. She seems to be pulling off the ball a lot. That swing getting a little longer for him, where normally he can go in left center field with a nice short swing. Well, Eric Wedge said last night he thinks Chu is because they've asked a lot of him. He thinks he's in one of those folks right now. Where he's well, I was sort of surprised he didn't give him back to back days off. But you know, with Hafner that now that he can't play and. It, it's just, and you're you're carrying 13 pitchers, man. I mean, your bench is deleted to begin with. So it's rare when you can get guys, you know, a couple extra days if you need it. There you go. Lines one toward left center field and will split the outfielders. That's going to score Jimenez and Cabrera, right. and Chu's going to go for three. And he will go hit first in there with a triple. Exactly what I was talking about, Chu. Good job. His second triple of the year, and it puts the Indians in front three to one. Close play at third, but once Chu hit second, he made up his mind. He was going for three. Yeah, he almost decided it between first and second. This is going to be our McDonald's. I'm loving it, and look at him. He stayed on. It's a breaking ball. One of the better swings he had. Go the other way. Stayed right in there. Drives in a pair. That is going to be a big hit for him. So they score two runs. It'll probably chase Zabchinski. But the Indians come back and take a three to one lead. It's a big hit for Chu. And it is the pitch that knocks Zabchinski out of the ballgame. The Indians lead it three to one. We'll be right back. By Shinsu Chu. We'll see if that's the kind of hit that loosens things up for this Indians offense. Well, for him at least, uh, you know, that was a good swing going the other way. Mark Zepchinski, meanwhile, he's on the bench now after four and a third inning. Four walks, three hits, six strikeouts. It's kind of an ugly game for him. Yeah. Camp appearing for the 33rd time, and in his first 32 appearances, 11 of them, he has pitched two or more innings. Victor Martinez looks at ball one. Martinez a walk his last time up, struck out in his first at bat. But that was debatable as to whether or not it really was a strikeout. On the ground, sharply hit. Hill has no play at home. And Shinsu Chu aggressively going on contact. That goes to show you, and when you get a good jump as a base runner and you run well, that's why Chu is a Excellent base run. That's on turf. Ball hit right to the second baseman and right at him, and he comes up. Watch Chu's jump. Boom. As soon as it's on the ground, he is off and running. He didn't have time to throw him out. 
And I mean, it was right at him. Good job. Good base running. Shinsu Chewy gets Victor in RBI. They make it a 4-1 uh, ball game. When you talk about being good teammates, that's that's a play where you make Victor feel a whole lot better about his No event. doubt about it. That's what it's all about right there. That's something that doesn't show up in the, in the box score tomorrow. But I'll tell you, the hustle of Chu not only getting to third base for that triple, and then base running and getting him in. It gets your teammate an RBI. It gives your team a three-run lead. That, that's just great hustle all the way around. Victor's 62nd RBI on the year. And the Indians are now in front. Four to one. Johnny Peralta swings and misses. And the inning is over. And the Indians get three. And now lead the Jays by three. No, I think that's what we're going to be ending up trying to fly out of here in a little while. A gray, cloudy, rainy day here in Toronto. Good news is we've got the Sky Dome or the Rogers Center as it's now called. Rod Barajas leading off the home half of the fifth for Toronto 0 for 1. 0 for 4 in the series. First game of the series, the roof was closed. Last night it was open partially for well, five or six innings. One ball, one strike. And now a 1 1 from Huff. All to strike outside corner. David, 61 pitches so far. I was just looking at that to see. He seems to be, he's been pretty efficient today. 38 to 23, strikes to balls. Just inside. Two and two. Barajas, then John McDonald and Marco Scudero here in the fifth for Toronto. Swung on and missed. Gets the strikeout second of the day for David Huff. One down. Let's go back to the SDO studios right now for a Ford Sports update. All right, thanks, Al. There's Johnny Mack. 
Takes a strike outside edge. Whooped left field, dropping in a hurry. Cabrera makes a running catch to take a hit away from the Blue Jays' number nine hitter. Johnny Mack coming to show for it. He's over well, two. It's fun when you you sit back. We had a good view of this. He just turns his back to the infield, looks back up, and he knows he's got it all the way. That's good hustle. That's a good play. Not easy to do with your back to the infield. But you know, good athletes, they seem to make the catches. Cabrera does. And with two down, Marco Scudero steps in. This is a big inning for David Hoff. It always is when your starter and your team gets you the lead to go back out and throw up a quick zero. Well, they did it last inning and he gave it right back in two hitters. So now yeah. they come back, they put three on the board because of the error, and it is beautiful if you can go one, two, three. Because you get that offense right back in and you've got the momentum going now. You don't let the, the home team get it back. He's got Scooter down on the count on one, two. I mean, and that's how you how you change it when you're on the road and you're a visiting team playing on the road. The Indians have struggled this year. Is you've got to stop the momentum. So when you score, you've got to take it away from them. Don't let them score. Just make it tough. Us only allowed three hits today. Back to back doubles in the fourth led to the Jays only run. He's walked one struck out two. And the 0 2 pitch. Foul away. Now the two strike pitch. And that's foul back. Now this is a tough out. He's checking with the umpire now to see if he's swinging at strikes. But when you protect, you have two strikes, he's down to the count 0 2. But Huff's going right at him, isn't he? He's not uh, playing around. 0 2 pitch. That's going to be yanked down into the corner. I don't think he got the location of that did. pitch that he wanted. Well, and what's new? Four hits, four doubles. No, you're right, Matt. He didn't. Jim has wanted that ball inside. You know, he's sitting down and in to get him to swing over the top of that slow breaking ball. He leaves it out over the plate. So, as we mentioned before, he tried to throw him a strike, but right there, there's a case in point. Although he does have two outs where you give up an 0 2 base hit because of not hitting your location. And he knows it. Jimenez knows it, and, and they'll sit and discuss it. Now he's got Aaron Hill to contend with. He's 0 for 2 with a ground out. And he also fouled out straight up at home plate. This is hit a long way. Deep left center field. Francisco watching it go. And David Huff gives it right back. A two-run home run to Aaron Hill. It's a one-run game. Blue Jays steal back the momentum. Yes, they do. And boy, that was their MO last night on the long ball. Every hit today on the five have been extra base hits. Four doubles, now the home run and a fastball right down Broadway. Out over the plate. And Hill hits his 22nd. His second in as many nights. So four three ball game now Adam Wynn. Well you see how quickly that yeah. can happen. I mean that's the thing he's got two outs bases empty. Has nobody out. Down on the count 0 and 2. 0 2 count right the lack of uh, execute while well, locating your breaking ball and then a fastball out over the plate and it's for four to three. So back to back innings the, uh, the Jays are able to come back and take a little steam away from the Indians. He's got Adam Wynn down on the count now 0 and 2. This is all part of the process, so where you got to go out there and you, you got to figure it out on your own. Hey. 
checked the swing. Ask. Looked like it was. He close. should ask because they've been bringing him up today. No appeal. It's two and two. It's going to go out of play on the left side. Four three. Tribe leads it. Blue Jays batting. Base is empty, two down, last of the fifth. Got him. Good pitch by Huff. Strikes out his third, but the Blue Jays get back in it with a two run homer. It's now a 4 3 Indians lead. Can't deliver Zoom. Ryan fouls it out of play. Garco 0 for 2 today. After starting the series, a perfect 4 for 4. Just inside, 1 and 1. Hit him. Okay, second guy today. Ryan Darko will go to first, and the Indians get that leadoff man aboard again. In the last two innings, they've had their leadoff man on, and they've scored. That one just right on the pad. He just takes off. Darko was hit last night with a pitch, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah, so. Now Ben Francisco, his base is loaded, walk drove in a run in the fourth. We are in the sixth here in Toronto. And the Indians hold to a one run lead. Trying to add here. Foul ball is going to stay just foul. Up the third base side. Garko will go back to first. It's 0 2 on Francisco. We invite you to stay tuned after the ball game, the Conrad's post game show, and then an afternoon edition of All Bets Are Off with Bruce Drennan. Well, that's right. 
usually on day games like this he likes us to play really long games <laughs> so he has less time on the air so we're hoping to get this one over with in a hurry so he's got to make him work. I'm sure he'll be feeling phone calls with the trading deadline on the horizon. Fans weighing in on their opinions what they think the Indians should do. Not to mention Brown's training camp will be opening up before long. That is what tomorrow the 24th is it. Sports time Ohio programming the official Cleveland Brown station will be. Underway in early August training camp daily. There's a wide drive single in the left field for Francisco and Ryan Garko will stop at second. So the Indians come right back trying to answer the Blue Jays offensive attack. First two on here in the sixth and now Jamie Carroll the batter. Look like a spinner up there. He elevated it and uh, Francisco finds that hole in the left field. So Ben will get his first hit and get hit number four. Looks like the Blue Jays were talking at the mound about bunt plays with Jamie Carroll coming up here. What they want to do if they try to bunt him over here. Now the one thing I always think about when the bunt play is being proposed is who's the on deck hitter? Well, yeah, you look, you look right away. And not that they couldn't pinch hit in this situation, but with Chris Jimenez, a young player who hasn't had a lot of experience. It's okay. He's got a base knock. He's got to get his opportunities. You're still in the sixth inning. You're trying to move him over and add on. The squares. Again, it's outside 2 0. Well, you can see how Millar's really choking Jamie Carroll down that first baseline. Hey, on this turf, go ahead if you Bunt want. It past to. him. You know, swing can't it. Move left or right. Swing <laughs> it. Drive it down his throat. See if he likes it. I'll, he'll quit charging as much. You want to come in on this turf? Come on in. Millar goes to third, not in time. Oh, he punches him out. It looked like Garko had beaten the throw, but he's out number one. Oh, a very See? close play, but Millar, because he was charging in. Able to make the backhanded grab and throw. I didn't think he was going to have a chance. I didn't see. I forgot Garko was running at second base. But look where he's at. And this is out in front. This is towards the third base side of the pitching rubber. Oh, I don't know. I don't, I mean, I don't know it. either. But it's it's bang, bang. And if that's the case in point, if you Let don't it bunt it to the third base line, you swing it. I think it froze up on us. First and second one out. Chris Jimenez now. A single and score. Now a throw back to second into center field. Francisco's going to go to third and alertly Jamie Carroll moves oh, up to second. Nice bunt. <laughs> there you go. Well, how do you like that? It paid dividends, didn't it? Another error on the pitcher. Sean Camp airmailed the throw into center field. And now the Indians. Are back in business. Well, Francisco took off, didn't he? Like he was going to steal and then had to go back. Watch. He's coming set. He turns his head. There's Francisco, but he got caught. And then he goes to throw it back and just threw it into center field. Pitchers. They hate to make a throw back there, but good hustle by Jamie Carroll to get himself into scoring position and take the double play away. So that's got to be an error on the pitcher on the throw. And they move the runners up. So you know what, uh, Carol? Good, good hustle. And <laughs> now it looks like it was a good bunt. I like the way you said pitchers. <laughs> Something on this. One and one to count. Uh, yeah. you throw it over the base. You got to make sure you have a player there. Well, he just made a good play to get the lead runner for him, and then he gives it right back. Well, yeah, the uh, the the. the, the the players did. <laughs> first, first baseman, third baseman. One-one pitch. And infield in with Jimenez at the plate. Now he's down on the count. One ball, two strikes. Francisco at third base. Jamie Carroll at second. Indians lead by a run. Slow 
chopper up the middle. McDonald's only play will go to first. And the Indians grab a run as Francisco scores. But by putting the ball in play, Chris Jimenez picks up the RBI. That's it's right. Third on the year, 5 3 Indians on the play. Carroll moves to third base. Second time they've been able to drive in a run with just hitting the ball on the ground and in the infield. They've got two RBIs and never hit a ball out of the infield. So they come back, make it a 5 3 game. For Chris Jimenez, his first RBI other than a home run. And the error proves costly again for Sean Camp. Well, they both errors in this game have, have cost him. And all three in errors series, in the yeah. series have really hurt him. And we told you, could best fielding team in the league coming in percentage wise. That's only their 35th error. 1 0 pitch. Down low 2 0. Blue Jay bullpen getting busy. There's Jeremy Cardo. Three balls, no strikes. See if Sizemore gets a pitch that he can turn it loose on. He went after him and came up empty. Full count. Brady 0 for 3 today. 0 for 11 in the series. 0 for his last 17 overall. And this, after he was off to such a great start. Through the middle of July in this month. Since coming back from the DL. Payoff pitch, straight through call. Indians had a run, middle of the six. It's now 5 3 Cleveland. <laughs> Murphy's fine dining. Yes, indeed. White table five star. Only. <laughs> had a bag of chips in there. Kevin Millar will lead off the home half of inning number 
Six for Toronto. Fouls that pitch out. Now we'll see if David Huff can come back and, and shut him down this inning. This is his third consecutive inning. He's going to have an opportunity to do that. Well, you talked about the five inning mark. You got to get past the fifth right. inning. And he's out there into the sixth into inning. The sixth. So now I don't see anybody up getting loose over in that Indians bullpen. But sometimes with these young pitchers, you know, we, we watch Jeremy Sowers this year. When he gets to that five, you almost have to have somebody ready. Well, if he could somehow get through this quickly, you'd have a chance for another inning. Well, yeah, but you had two outs, nobody on last yes. inning, and they ended up boom, boom. I mean, in a matter of two pitches. And that's the tough thing to do sometimes when, you know, you get a guy cruising. And you, the last thing you want to do as a manager is get somebody up, and you see the bullpens get loose. You know when you're pitching okay. You know and it's, it's just hard to do. It's just a, a phase that these young kids got to get through. Now I see Millar stepping out making him wait a little bit longer. He's playing a little game with him. Didn't mean to. He's not going to get a hit here is he? Cabrera's throw in time. Terrific play so. by his dribble Cabrera on the check swing bouncer. Millar is out number one and he's not happy with himself. No, because you have to count in your favor. He's a veteran. He knows on a 3 1 pitch, you either let it fly or you take it. And that was a check swing. So that ends up turning into a bad at bat and a big break right there for Huff. That ends up, that's a, that's a good way to get that leadoff man. Vernon Wells takes a strike. Vernon Wells in game one was booed at every turn here at the Rogers Center. Then he homered in his first at bat last night, and that got the fans off his back a little bit. He acknowledged that, you know, he's here in the booth, but he said, hey, nothing I can do about that. Double. He said, hey, if fans pay their good money. If they want to boo, they can boo. Nothing I can do about it other than try to go out and play better. I'll certainly help his cause with a double. Our direct energy bringing the gas sequence. Take you back to the fourth inning. Alex Rios facing David Huff. Well, Huff has three strikeouts on the day, but this being number one, he had to work for it. That was a pretty good pitch, not called. And you see him swing and a miss. The high breaking ball. Fouled off strike number two. Went down and in and couldn't do it. Fouled off another one. Got him. Expanded it. Went upstairs. There's a comebacker to the mound. Huff will lob to first to take care of Rios two down. Now Jose Batista will be the batter. So Rios has tapped it slowly back to Huff. Now he's got a chance to get out of the inning. Unscathed if he can take care of Jose Batista, who is 0 for 2. Strikes. Well, Batista would love to make amends for his costly. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That cost him two back in the what was it, the fourth inning or fifth, fifth inning? inning? Yeah, fifth. two unearned runs. Normally, and when you think about it, with Rowland in there, it's probably a double play. Popped him up. Jamie Carroll gliding out. Chu coming in. Chu says, Let me have it, and he does take it. All right, a zero. Nice job by David Huff. And it looks like he'll be coming back out for the seventh as well. It's 5 3 Cleveland.
natural gas needs. Visit directenergy.com slash go try for details. And by AM PM, too much good stuff. Back here in Toronto, where the Indians lead the Blue Jays 5-3. One of the seventh inning of play. Third Blue Jay pitcher of the afternoon is right-hander Jeremy Accardo. He pitched in the series. He's coming back for the second time and the 15th time on the year. Accardo pitched in game number one of the series where he went an inning and had one strikeout. He pitched the eighth. Face Peralta, Francisco, and Carroll on that one. He's going to come in and face Cabrera, Chu, and Martinez here. As Dribble Cabrera is one for three. Reached on an error his last time up and scored. And also singled and scored in the fourth. And he ends up five to three. Features that electric blue glove. Yeah, we were talking about it the other night. It doesn't go real well with these black jerseys, does it? Is that, uh, is that drink? Is it Curacao? Real... Oh, I'm not sure. Pitch is down low. Two balls and a strike. Two one in the air center field. Martin Wells drifting back. One down. Time now for our Northern Ohio Toyota dealers game recap. Shin Su Chu had a two run triple in the fifth that made it a three one Indians lead. And then Victor Martinez rounds it to second with the infield in, but Chu alertly and aggressively came home on the play made it four one. And Wells two run homer. Like the Jays back to make it 4-3, and the Indians have added one since. For a dealer near you, visit buyatoyota.com. Shoot, grounds it right to third. Batista's got this one. Goes an off two away. Another check of the Alltel Text Bowl question of the game. Who was MVP of the Blue Jays' first World Series championship team in 1992? Was it Joe Carter? Robbie Alamo, Dave Winfield, Pat Borders. Text your answer to 31962 and we'll have the results in a little while. The 92 World Series, not quite as exciting as the following year. And they won it here at the Sky Dome in walk off fashion. Against the Phils. Fighting Phils, Mitch Wild Thing Williams. Victor Martinez 0 for 2, but that ground out on the fifth. Key in this game because it's so closely contested. Well, as you said, that really makes you feel much better as a hitter when that guy does his job on the base to score a run. It makes you feel like you did your job because he put the ball in play, although it was right at an infielder. It was a good job of base running by Chu to get that run in. And you really do. You feel much better about yourself. One and two to count on Martinez. Hey, don't forget, folks, you can buy your Sports Time Ohio merchandise at STOStuff.com. The Rick and Matt Bobblehead now available while supplies last. <laughs> and don't forget Bruce Drennan. I love you, Cleveland bottle openers available. All the STO gear only at STOStuff.com. Out away by Martinez. Did your dad get his shipment yet? Tell him uh, when we get off the trip. We'll, we'll we couldn't afford overnight shipping. <laughs> That's true. Not up here. Tell him he's got to wait till we get back from L.A. At least they're not talking bobbleheads. 
<laughs> Here's the one two. Do you have anyone in mind you're talking about? Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last thing we need to do is for the next year walk into Tony's office and have to oh, listen to him hit the button. By the way, we can tell Tony I got a place in Hilton Head for him over the holidays. Great deal. Steal of a deal. 2 2 pitch weekly hit to short. John McDonald fires a low, but Bar digs it out. 1 2 3. Go the Indians. Stretch time in Toronto. 5 3. Tribe on top. Fans, don't forget you can stop by Panini's, catch the game, plus enjoy pizza, wings, or one of their famous overstuffed sandwiches on the beautiful outdoor patios. Home of the best outdoor dining in town. Visit Panini's Grill.com. Here at the Rogers Center, the Indians hold a 5 3 advantage as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Indians bullpen busy, double barrel action, righty lefty up, but right now it's David Huff's ball game. Done in for his fifth win of the year. It's a big inning for him to try and work through. Well, this is, uh, you know, the fourth time he has gone more than five innings. And every time that he has done that in the first three, he's won the ball game. Johnny Peralta picks up the grounder off the bat of Barajas. One pitch, one out. Let's take a look at the Mercedes attention assist of the game. Let's check out to McDonald's a little looper in the left field and back goes Cabrera on the dead run back to the infield puts the glove up and puts it away on a nice play. It's only fair John McDonald. He's stolen so many hits away from guys. In yes. His he's got to get a few taken. You're away. saying the, the, it's a game of justice. It will even out, huh? I don't. If you ask Johnny Mack, it hasn't even out. Well, you ask any hitter. It doesn't even out. <laughs> but he is having a pretty solid year at the plate. Stopped by Cabrera. Long throw. Not in time. Close play at first. On a ball that looked like it was ticketed for left field initially. Cabrera made a nice diving stop. But on the throw, McDonald hustling down the line, beat it out. Okay. He took one and he got one. And this time he gets one because he's hustling down the line. Cabrera from his knee just couldn't get enough on it. Garko made a nice catch to stay on the base. And you know the, the speed of McDonald just beats it out, but it was close. It was a good play by Cabrera. So one on one out now. Marco Scudero. Who doubled and scored his last time up. Well, that's the first hit today for the Blue Jays that wasn't an extra base knock. Uh-huh. Six out of their first seven, five doubles in the homer.
this for that pitch one and one. The only other time today the Blue Jays have had a runner at first base solely was when Adam Lynn walked with two outs in the first inning. Ball to second. This could get him out of the inning. Four, six, three, double play. So David Huff goes seven strong innings for the tribe here today. And he's in front with the tribe leading five to three. Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Eighth inning here in Toronto Indians lead at 5-3 Johnny Peralta leads off takes a first pitch strike from Jeremy Accardo. One ball, one strike. Two balls and a strike. Johnny lines one in the right field. Indians lead off man aboard, and that's been a good omen for them yes, today. Yes, it has. Let's send it back to the STO studios for a Ford Sports update. Ryan Garko stepping in. 0 for 2. Hit by a pitch his last time up. But every time the Indians have had their leadoff man aboard, they've scored. Garko was eventually erased in that sixth inning. A very close play at third. Tried to sacrifice him over with a bunt play, but then Sean Camp made a throwing error right after that. It moved the runners up to second and third, so it was almost as if they just swapped out for that sacrifice. And Chris Jimenez brought home Ben Francisco with an RBI ground out. Arco lines one foul, right side. No balls, two strikes.
Swung out and missed. Got him to expand the strike zone. One down. Well, Kick It is a uh, partnership between CIC and Flashes of Hope. It's a campaign to raise money for pediatric adolescents and young adult cancer research. You can register your teams at Kick It at Indians.com and KickIt.org. And they will hold special games in their community for, to raise money from now July to September. And then a couple of lucky teams will be able to play out on Progressive Field on Sundays. It'll take place August 2nd, the very first game. The honorary captains, Cliff and Kristen Lee and Travis and Amy Happen. There's Ben Francisco. Single and scored in the sixth. Early in the run with a bases loaded walk back in the fourth. And takes a strike to even the count. 32,061 the attendance here today. It's the biggest crowd of the three game series. Crowd, no doubt, boosted by the attendance of Pat DeLuca and Dave Spina from Niagara Falls. <laughs> Niagara Falls boys up here. Right. And Kids Day. Many buses. Your camp day. Yeah. Well, that's it's a good day to come inside here up in Toronto. Well, but that golf outing going on today. It starts today. That's right. 4-6-3 double play gets a cardo out of the inning. We will go to the bottom of the eighth here at the Rogers Center with the Indians in front 5-3 and David Huff's coming back for more. Smith warming once again in the Indians bullpen. Popped him back, foul out of play. Now the Blue Jays do have a couple of left handed hitters on the bench, namely Lyle Overbay and also David DeLucci. So he, Cito Gaston has some counter moves. And Derek Wedge goes to Joe Smith. Also have Scott Rowland. Well, I'm saying left-handed. I understand. You know? Yeah, I do understand. Ground ball, right side. Nice play by Carroll as he just kind of glided over. One down. Well, Progressive Field will transform into a unique restaurant. That'll be Saturday, July 25th. It's dinner on the diamond. You can enjoy uh, dinner, play catch out on the field. You get yourself a nice Cleveland Indians wine bucket. 
baseball cocktail party up on the home run porch before you get down there and eat a fabulous meal. Call 216 420 hits. Adam Lynn looks at a first pitch strike. Comes right back with another one. 0 oh and 2. An impressive. David Huff here today. Working into the eighth inning. Swag on and missed. He struck him out. Fourth strikeout today for David Huff. Two down in the eighth inning. As I mentioned earlier, Sports Time Ohio, your home for Cleveland Browns, starts August 1st, training camp daily. We'll also have Sunday Strategy, the Berea Report, Browns Red Zone. Jim Donovan, Doug Deacon, Tony Grossi, Mary Kay, Andre Knott, Zach Jackson, Coach Sam Ritigliano, all back this year. Your home for Cleveland Browns coverage, Sports Time Ohio. Kevin Millar, one out of three. His RBI double in the fourth. Got the Jays on the board today for the first time. Last time up, though, he was in a great hitter's count. And he had three a check swing where he didn't mean to, but he tapped it right by the mound. And his Drupal Cabrera threw him out. This is hit well deep to left. Francisco back. Running out of room, and it's out of here. Kevin Millar with his fifth home run of the year. It's a one run game. Two old count got to pitch to his liking boy and it's a fastball that uh, started to run inside and he puts it into the uh, Blue Jays bullpen. It makes it a one run ball game and that's going to do it for Huff today but he gives Eric Wedge some length in this ball game and will bring on Smitty. Indians lead cut to one on the homer by Kevin Millar. His fifth home run of the year has made it a 5 4 ball game. And now Joe Smith coming on to face Vernon Wells with two down and the bases empty. Wells doubled his last time up, takes the first pitch strike. Tony Sipp now warming in the Indians bullpen, left hander. He's up in case Cedo Gaston counters with Lyle Overbit. Pitch outside. One and one. Swung 
down and missed. Good pitch by Joe Smith. And it's the ball and two strikes. Joe Smith, he came in to face one man and he got him. And he one of the night, 5 4 Cleveland. Inning for Toronto. Trying to hold the Indians at bay. This is Fraser now. What did I say? Ricardo. Who yeah, just went two innings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fraser coming on for the second time in the series. So the fourth pitcher of the afternoon for Toronto. Yeah, Jeremy Ricardo went two innings. Only allowed one hit, struck out one. Jamie Carroll, Chris Jimenez, and Grady Sizemore. Scheduled for the drive as Kerry Wood loosens in the Indians' bullpen. Carroll today uh, walked, stole a base, and uh, struck out, and bounced into a fielder's choice. Throws it over one down. Check out the results of the Altel text poll. Question of the game. Uh, they took the bait on Joe Carter. He was the hero in the following year when he hit the game winning home run, but it was Pat Borders. Little known Pat Borders. Yeah. Stepped up and had a great World Series, hit 450 in that series. Later came to the Indians. He played till he was about 45, didn't he? He was through every organization. Chris Jimenez takes the ball outside. Jimenez one out of three, singled and scored in the fifth inning. Drove in a run with a ground out in the sixth. There you see Kerry Wood. He's 
ready to come on to try to nail it down in the bottom of the ninth. Meanwhile, the Indians would love to add some insurance here. Jason Fraser looks in. And threw it by a good fastball, one and two. Pitch spoiled by Chris Jimenez. Jason Fraser, like Indians hitting coach Derek Shelton, a Saluki. Just four seasons for Southern Illinois University. Second on the school's all time strikeout list. by Chris Jimenez so he's hanging in there. Fraser's become one of those very dependable reliable relievers. 49 appearances last year 51 the year before that 51 prior to that career high 67 appearances back in 05. And every year his ERA is right around four I mean, you, you know what you're going to get in that. It's comforting for a general manager when you're putting a club together every year to yeah. know you can count on this guy for X number of appearances. One of the better bullpens in the league last year, and the better pitching staffs. But you know when the, Ryan was hurt, and, and you know these, this team has been in the shambles, losing their their closer. You know how it knocks everything out of whack, and they've been able to hold hold everything together here pretty well. When you lose a closer, and, and and that's not an easy thing to do when you're trying to compete day in and day out because it puts everybody in different roles. My ball to right field. Rios makes the catch. Two down. Well, four new members are going into the Indians Hall of Fame. That'll be August 1st. It'll be Sandy Alomar Jr., Wes Farrell, and distinguished inductees Bill Veck and Richard Jacobs. And love to see a great turnout there for Sandy Alomar. That'll be a, uh, a reminiscing of the, the 90s, I think. And also during the game, you'll get a Martinez bobblehead. Let's come on out and support Sandy Alomar and the rest of the new inductees into the Cleveland Hall of Fame. Randy Sizemore 0 for 4 today. It's ball one down low. Ground ball up the middle into center field. A two out single for Sizemore. He snaps out of that. Hit. Yeah, 0 for 18. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, he needed that. Little slider in. He's walked a couple times in the series. He was reached uh, on the air last night. That's his first base hit in the series. With a tie and a low throw. Nice pick by Kevin Millar. The problem with first base here is if it gets past the first baseman, you can run a little bit. There's quite a bit of a gap between the bag and the stands. And if it kicks down the line at all, look out. Jason Fraser delivers and Cabrera takes a strike. Now is this one of the situations clearly where Eric Wedge is telling Cabrera take a couple of pitches see if Grady can get a lead and take off. Well he doesn't tell Cabrera anything because what he's going to do he will flash a sign and if you get a jump go ahead take off and run. 
if you can steal the base. And Grady knows the earlier the better. You know, you don't want to get that hitter buried, but Cabrera would do that on his own if he thought that uh, Grady was going to take off in this situation. But you know, on this turf, he can hit a gap, and he's had a few extra base hits there in this series. Chased after a pitch that time, 0 2. That makes it tough now for Sizemore to run because he can pitch out. So he's going to have to hold steady at least for a pitch or two. Two down, ninth inning. Indians lead it 5 to 4. Gary Wood ready in the bullpen to work the bottom of the ninth. And he'll be facing the six, seven, and eight hitters for Toronto. Grounded right at the second baseman, Aaron Hill. And we'll go to the bottom of the ninth in Toronto. 5 4 Cleveland. Bottom of the ninth in Toronto. The Indians with a one run lead, five to four, calling on Kerry Wood to try to nail down the victory and give the Indians a win in the series. Well, Wood appearing now for the 37th time, looking for his 13th save. Coming on to face Rios, Bautista Barajas, the scheduled hitters. You mentioned they have a couple left handers on the bench. Mile over Bay, David DeLucci are on the bench for Toronto, but they're not going to pitch in for Rios. We'll see what happens with Batista, who's on deck. And of course, the catcher spot for Rajas. Rios one for three with a double. the third time that uh, Kerry Wood has appeared against the Jays this year. He has gone two innings, given up two hits and a couple of runs. Has walked one and struck out four. Pounds a fastball in there for strike one. Rios at least has had some success against Kerry Wood. Right hander is quickly hit 0 and 2. Chris Jimenez in his first major league career start behind the plate today. Gone the distance. He worked David Huff through seven and two thirds. Joe Smith through a third. And oh, now a breaking ball nails Rios in the helmet. Had him down 0 2. 
And now the Jays get their leadoff man aboard. Watching him warm up, he threw two pitches like that to the backstop and never had control of it. And an 0 2 pitch, and it goes right off the, the old noggin. He got underneath when that one took off. So they will get their tying run aboard. He got cut under this. It's curveball, and they're just taking by. Rio says he's okay. Cito Gasson wants to double check and make sure. But watch him cut underneath this pitch. Is that the curveball? It looked like, or, or a slider, but it gets him in the ear flap. So good thing he was wearing that. That right in the ear. Yes, it did. Ringing right now. Right, answer the phone. That's exactly right. Well. They have their leadoff man, and, uh, and we may not see that breaking ball again. From Gary Wood. Watching him warm up, you said that uh, one went down to the backstop, yeah. and the second pitch before he, they threw down the second, another one did. So Toronto has the tie run aboard to start the bottom of the ninth inning, and Jose Batista will bat. So it looks like it's a true. Day off for Scott Rowland. Well, you got McDonald coming up too. And you got you still got over Bay. Outside ball one. Batista today has not hit the ball out of the infield. A couple of pop-ups and a ground out. Strike to the outside edge, one and one. Runner goes. Pitch is low, throw to second. High in time and hit Rios on one hop. Now the tying run in the scoring position for Toronto, 16th stolen base of the year for Alex Rios. Well, they figure they'd take a chance. Wood, a guy that takes a little time again. Jimenez hasn't been behind the plate. The throw is not there. The second stolen base oh, of the afternoon. Right. Baker Parton, he had one back in the uh, yes, second. Yes, he end. did. He sure did. So he stole third base. Team on the year for Rios. Two one pitch in the air right field. Routine for two. They'll hold the runner at second base. One down. Let's get a look at our Northern Ohio view at Pontiac GMC performance of the game. David Huff seven and two thirds. Didn't give up four runs, but the key was getting deep into the ball game for Huff yes. against a very good offensive lineup for well, Toronto. It, it was. It was a good afternoon. For David, he gave up a couple of times after the Indians scored. He gave it right back, but it was still for him to get out and go seven and two thirds a good outing. Now Rod Barajas 0 for three. High ball one. Lyle Overbay has come into the on deck circle to pinch hit for John McDonald. This is high and foul and out of play on the right side. Post game show will come your way right after the ball game here in Toronto. We'll look back at the highlights, get you ready for the upcoming weekend series in Seattle. And then stay tuned for All Bets Are Off with Bruce Drennan. One one pitch. Popped him up. Ryan Garko into foul territory near the coach's box. He makes the grab two down. It'll be a tough customer for Kerry Wood to try to finish it off. Lyle Overbay will pitch it here in the bottom of the ninth with two down and the tying run at second base. Overbay 0 for 2 this year as a pinch hitter. 2 for 10 in his career against Wood. 
261 average on the year, nine homers, 42 runs batted in. It's Overbay who stands between Kerry Wood and a save and an Indians win. First pitch down low. Alex Rios, the tying run out at second base. And Wood comes right back with a good pitch for a strike to even the count. David Huff. If Wood can finish it off, will have his fifth win. Missed outside, two balls and a strike. Now the two one runner goes for third, and it's outside. Just took off. The Indians really don't care about that all that much. No, they want this guy at the plate. Three-one delivery. Strike call. Full count. That was a perfect pitch at the knees, outside corner. Not one that Overbay wanted to chase after. Wood comes right back with it again. The payoff. Strike three call. Game over. Kerry Wood nails the save down here in the bottom of the night. And the Toronto Blue Jays strand the tying run at third base. For Kerry Wood, it's his 13th save of the year. The win goes to David Huff.